Okay, well, trying to put it simply is very difficult. From my point of view, there's no point in trying to sell you another belief. And the more I've thought about the strange things which have happened and that I've experienced, the more I can say that the only thing that is 100% like uh, real, so to speak, is the fact that an experience of a certain type can be had. So, now that could mean the, there's something interesting about the place in which I had the strange experience. There could be something interesting, strange, or different about me. Or it could be that this is something which more people can have. When you look at other people's experiences, you start to see there's you know some kinds of correlations, some things which uh, seem to be almost universally applicable to different types of people uh, or different types of experiences which seem to happen. So we can say that, like. You know, hypothetically, I could just turn around to you and say, I had an experience which our culture would call seeing a ghost. I cannot say for sure that ghosts actually exist. I can say for sure that the experience happened because I experienced it, and therefore I'm telling you as a result of my experience. I can try and define or describe what I experienced, although I know intellectually that the fact I had that strange experience does not mean to say that spirits exist or ghosts exist or there's life after death or any of those things. But what I can do is I can describe the experience, namely there was a moment in time when something appeared to appear before me that looked just like a, a human being in full three-dimensional form. Uh, there was a facial you know, expression, um, this thing was wearing clothes of a certain period, this thing was slightly see-through or translucent and I could see the wall behind it, and then it just disappeared. Uh, I, I can say these things because it's trying to describe the experience. I admit that there could be delusionment or misunderstanding or all kinds of things which could have created the experience, but because some people are deluded does not mean to say that every single experience of that nature and that type is the product of delusionment. What we can say is that that is a type of experience that people have. So, as an experimental occultist, what I try and do is to bring about the, that kind of or similar kinds of strange experience. This involves the use of forms of mildly mind-altering techniques or technologies combined with forms of suggestion which enable me to reach a suspension of disbelief. And in that suspension of disbelief, it's more likely that something of a strange experience or strange nature could possibly happen. You know, I assume. I can't say it's 100% reliable. Some people say that, you know, if you burn a certain color candle on a certain day of the week at a certain time of day, then you will reliably get the result. That is, of course, complete irrational superstition. That's, that's not attempting to try and understand the way the world works. Are you with me so far? Hmm? So, I do this for my own curiosity. I do this to build up the repertoire of strange experiences I've had. I do this because I'm curious about the way the world works. Uh, and I can't turn around to you and say that there is proof of God. I can't turn around to you and say that there is proof of angels or demons and all the rest of that. I have had angel experiences. I have had demon experiences. I have had what could be regarded as being God experiences. Uh, and a wide variety of other mystical things, you know, including like prophetic dreams and and all kinds of other curiosities. But these are strange experiences. Just, just remember that a strange experience by its very nature can only prove to you personally that a strange experience can occur. It, it really cannot, under any circumstances, 100% uh, prove what the strange experience appears to suggest. It's one of my key phrases, I know, and I carry on repeating it, and, and, and I think I have to carry on repeating it, because people need to absorb that message very strongly. 
because the, I think that's the only way that we can stop the New Age movement, the occult movement, the pagan movement, the spiritualist movement from generating new religions and new cults, and to try and reach a point whereby the what I assumed was the original promises of like the New Age movement, the spiritualist movement, and the rest of that from many, many years ago could actually start to come about. And that is to try and treat this stuff as a technology, to see what we can do with it, to see whether it can help with human understanding of ourselves and our nature, uh, to be used for possibly even some therapeutic purposes at some point in the future, uh, and also the possibility of communication over a distance. And by extension from that, to work out, you know, where the, you know, <laughs> where the human being ends, so to speak, and the rest of the world begins. Because I, in some of the experiences you can have, just stop it from seeming quite so clear cut as to say that, you know, like my skin is the boundary of what I am. And you do tend to get the occasional experience which is connected to the ideas of remote viewing or astral projection or telepathy over a distance or empathic connections with someone who you're close to or you're concerned about over a distance. Uh, which raises more questions. And as I, I carry on saying this, like, raises more questions, because it does. The questions are, you know, are we restrained to our bodies? Is our sensory, can our sensory perception extend beyond our bodies and beyond the intellectual limitations of um, our own waking conscious minds? Um, can, how about our ability to use psychosomatic healing? Can that be extended outside of the body? Uh, all of these things are questions, you know, that they're, they're, they're not concrete answers, and there's, there's lots of arguments uh, to and fro, you know, from various different points of view, but these are still arguments. Eventually, we, we as a species, I believe, you know, I hope, I aspire, uh, will come to an understanding of what all this stuff actually does start to mean. Uh, we can create all kinds of theories to do with quantum entanglement or the holographic theory of the universe and connect that to the mind, but that's, that stuff is hypothetical, it's not proven yet. All right, that's why we've got more questions and we don't yet, you know, have the answers. It's, um, it's a very difficult state of affairs that the modern-day occultist is actually in. If the modern-day occultist is not going to be a religious person, it, it is so much easier for one of these people just to sell a new religion. All right, you know, there's people all around the place who are doing that all the time. Uh, and I just question the validity and the importance of that, I mean, yeah, sure, there's a political importance to a certain extent. For some people, there's an identity benefit or a therapeutic benefit in another way, but it doesn't really help everybody because we're talking about things which happen, right? Things which happen in nature and are therefore natural and therefore have to be understood better. And that's what's really important. You know, there are people in the world who are sick, uh, who've got all kinds of issues going on with them, and maybe, you know, we can try and use this technology, if not to cure diseases, then maybe to try and help people to get a bit healthier in some respects. All right? Or, you know, just help out a little. Anyway, that's all for now.